you need guys to kind of emerge mm -hmm. a little bit because you're you're blending some veterans, but you're also in need of some young guys to step up a little bit. Am I correct in that this year? Yeah, it's like that every year. You, you, you know, you have guys that, that go on in the program. We've drafted, we've developed, and they've on their second contracts, and then we've uh, drafted some younger guys that you want to have a good blend of both old and young guys in there. I think, uh, and and the older guys can show the younger guys how we do things around here. It's just it's an extension of the coaching staff. So it's a uh, it's a good blend of guys we have right now. Is there any area there that you're more antsy that you have feel you have more question marks? All eleven. <laughs> no, we're we're in good shape. We're backed up. We're we're deep. There's going to be some battles at every position, really, in in training camp, which is how you want it. Uh, competitive, good battles. The guys are fighting for spots, so uh, it'll be an exciting camp. Some guys under you at the position uh, are, are new on your staff. Uh huh. Uh, how difficult is that? Just to take that. Okay, I want to make sure we're doing this the same way, the the way I need it done. Well, it's kind of like uh, when I, when Marvin lost both coordinators. That doesn't happen very often, you know, and. We, you know, after last year, we hire a whole brand new defensive staff. So you're bringing all these guys in from different systems, and uh, you're really coaching the coaches in the spring to make sure they're rolling it out to the players how you want it said. So um, uh, I went out and tried to find the best guys I could, young, old, whatever it is, experienced, not experienced, but the best guys I think were fit for our players in each room. I think uh, we did a good job with that. Uh, you go through OTAs, you go through camps, and so everybody should be pretty acquainted with the system so what's the essential part of training camp that you need to get out of these next few weeks well you know once training camp starts you're not really game planning for an opponent so you're really working the the, the fundamental techniques of each defense each footwork each step each where your eyes are supposed to be not so much hey we're playing the Jets and we got to know where this guy's at and that guy's at it's more a g generic thing against our offense we're not necessarily trying to game plan our offense but it's it's more technique fundamentals uh, those type of things and the next really three or four weeks we're looking for. Is that what you enjoy about coaching as opposed to week in, week out where it's more game planning, more uh, opponent specific? Well, one of the things I think happens in coaching is once you get into the, into the, to the games, into the, the league games and the regular season, you, you, not, you try not, you start to wean away from like watching the techniques and you letting the players get a little, and we've been really good to stand on top of that stuff and, and getting the players to understand in training camp, this is how we want it done all the time. So when it comes to the regular season, it doesn't wean, you know, so you, you get on top of them right now. And, uh, you know, we've done a good job in the past of doing that. You guys played well on mm -hmm. defense last mm -hmm. year. What specifically would you like to see improvement in this year? Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously you know, we did a good job in the scoring defense. We always explain, we always talk to our players about situational football, whether it be four minute, one minute, red zone, two point plays, whatever it is. Um, it, it's just getting a better, better, better understanding of uh, specific situations that win or lose you ball games. Really, it could be a first and ten, it could be a third and seven with three minutes left to close it out. But um, I just think that, and obviously, you know, we got to do a good job of being smart situationally and emotionally on the field. Those are two things I'm, I'm really uh, harping on this uh, training camp. That's a fine line, just yep. pulling guys back from mm -hmm. being emotional, because defensively, that's what right. it's all about. Right. You know, I think every great defense has an identity, and, and you know, what I told our players after, you know, everyone made a big deal out of you know, what happened last year in the playoff game, I said, are we going to change the way we play? No, what we're going to do is we're going to put our foot down on the gas pedal, but we got to be smarter with it. We've, you know, we're one of the most feared units in the league, and I think, uh, I think the guys know that, and, but we have to be smarter uh, and, and walk away from some of the other stuff that happens. Is this game still evolving? I mean, you've seen it's not the same game you started in. No. To follow up on uh, what you were just talking about, but is it... Uh, is, is, do you think the game's going to change much more? Do you think the NFL has pretty much done what it can as far as for the safety of the players, but allow still the aggressive nature of football to take over? Yeah, I mean, you know, pretty much every bang bang play on, on, a, on a pass, whether you're hitting in the target zone or not, I would say nine times out of ten, that's going to get a flag. It's just the way it, is. it looks bang bang. You know, we teach target zone hitting, the whole thing. But uh, I mean, the NFL's done a tremendous, you know, great job of, you know, the concussion protocols to the injury awareness, all those things, and trying to keep the safety in the game. I, I just don't know how much more safe you can make it uh, than what they've already have. So, I think, uh, you know, we, you just got to coach the guys and understand this is where you're trying to hit a guy. This is what you can't do around the quarterback's feet. Those type of things, and continue to educate the players on on what the league's looking for. Have you made it a point about like, the way last season mm -hmm. you said you made it a point we're not going to change the way we play? Do you not elaborate on it anymore? Is that 
in the past now and you go on the field? Oh, that's, yeah, that was, that was put to bed when, you know, after the game was over, uh, you can say whatever you want to say. There's 53 guys in the locker room. We're going to take it differently. So you got to let the player walk away from a little bit, blow off some steam. And when you come back in the spring, you identify it. You say, this is, this is what happened. Let's handle this, man. Let's correct it. Let's move forward and use it. Don't just forget about it. Use it and put it in the back of your mind. Say, hey, we can't make that mistake again. So, I mean, the guys, you know, played their butts off that night. And, you know, we just we can't make one mistake and cost you the season. So. Obviously, we, we've, 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 we've addressed it in the spring. It's been put to bed. It's long in our, and we're looking towards 2016. Obviously, the roster is still in flux heading into camp, but you lost two DBs. Yep. You know, pretty recently. How does that affect you know, what you got to do as far as the plan? It's part of the business. You're going to lose players every year. You try not to, especially the guys that you've developed and you spent a lot of time coaching. But it's part of it. We had a lot of free agents last year. We tried to keep as many as we could. So. Uh, you know, the guys that didn't quite make it back here, you know, we always have guys training uh, to, to fill their spots. So, you know, one of the things in training camp in these preseason games, I always told the coaches, said, don't worry about, you know, how many plays the first team plays. Put the guys we're not sure about on the 52-53 number, put them in there in the first play of the game, play against their good guys, because that's really, you know, what those games are about. They're proving grounds. So um, we're going to put some of those guys in those proving ground areas uh, this, this preseason. What's that, uh, you talked about coaching up the coaches, I guess, during OTAs yeah. and, and mini camps and stuff like that. This is a really experienced defensive unit you got here. You got a former head coach, you got a former right. defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. so what's that kind of like, I guess, from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, not necessarily from a X's and O's standpoint, but maybe, hey, on game day and adjustments, something that he may see that another guy may not see that he's been down through those battles or through those situations that, that will help out. I think, like I said, I wasn't looking for head coaches or coordinators. I just, I, I, saw, I saw after the guys were available at the time. And really, when I made those decisions, I, I had the players in mind more than anything. Hey, who were going to fit the players in that room with this coach and that coach and what I felt like we needed to do to address the, the you don't have an opportunity very many times to bring in a whole new staff. And it was a unique situation.